welcome to Atlanta Live. I'm your host, Nancy J. Lewis, and I'm so glad you're tuning in this evening. We have an anointed show for you. We have great guests. We have great music. You will be blessed tonight. If you've been struggling with life, you've been struggling with issues, you're going to be encouraged tonight to just know that you just have to keep going. God is on your side. God wants you to win. So we bless God for you. We thank you for tuning in. Tell a friend, tell a neighbor. You want to be stay, you want to stay tonight. You want to stay with us tonight the whole hour because you're going to be blessed by the word. You're going to be blessed by what our guests are going to be sharing in terms of their stories, their journeys, how their test has become a testimony, how their pain has become a pearl, how God is using them to encourage people. So you're going to be encouraged tonight. So we bless God for you being here with us. We thank you for tuning in. We just know that God has a word for you. He has a word for you. Just be in tune to hear that word tonight. And we're going to go to our first music guest, Psalmist Rain. We want you. It's our desire to enjoy the presence of the Lord, to fellowship with him all over the world. I want you to take a few moments to shout, Lord, I want you more than anything. I want you more than anything, more than my desires, more than my dreams. I want you, God. And so this is our song to say, oh, God, do the unexpected, the supernatural, and move among the earth with no restrictions, blow
We're back. Once again, I have some amazing guests this evening that are going to just really bless you with some things that they're doing. And I want to welcome to the set, Annetta Swift and Tabor Harden. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So you are doing great things. God is using you, uh, the gifts he's placed inside of you. So tell people a little bit about who you are, and then we're going to jump into some of the things that you want to share this evening. Okay, I'm Annetta Swift, um, born and raised in Cleveland, but I moved to Atlanta in 89. And um, eventually I became an author. That's where I am right now, um, writing books. I've written 25 books. Um, I've been doing books for like 21 years and then plays for like 17 years. And so now I stepped out on my own because I was doing it with my church. Mm -hmm. Stepped out on my own to um, go under my business name, The Ready Writer. And so we're still doing plays. Now we're introducing movies and the books. So we're trying to do it all to bring a message of hope to people. That's what I'm here for, to bring a message of hope yeah. to everybody. Because yeah, people need that message of hope because there's a lot of things that happen after COVID or whatever this new era we're in that really opened up our eyes to see a lot of things that how people really were and they weren't okay. Yes. We know if you got Jesus on your side, you okay. Yeah, but they still weren't okay. <laughs> but, they, but he is our foundation. He is there for us. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So you're doing some things that are bringing back hope and you have your executive producers that so tell us a little bit about who you are, Tabor Harden. Well, um, I started with Nutter a long time ago, and we were doing um, church plays. And mm -hmm. She's an amazing writer. Her talent is amazing, and she allowed me, she blessed me to be an, um, one of her star actors mm -hmm. in most of her plays, right, mm -hmm. since we met. Yes. And um, it's just an amazing, she's, she's just amazing talent, you know. So I'm just blessed to be... Um, a part of anything she's doing. Um, like I said, we was doing the, <clears throat> the church plays, mm -hmm. and then she wanted to kind of branch off. Well, she had kind of like gave up on doing it, and I was like, that doesn't make sense because I would get into it with God because I didn't know what my gift was. But to have a gift that's so, you know, broad and plain, that's a blessing. Like, Amen. You know, and God so. says your, gifts will, your gift will make room for oh, you. Absolutely. So you start working with her. You were like the lead actor in her plays. So how did you get started with realizing this was a gift that God had given you? Because I've read one of your books and I was really, I was impressed when I read your book. <laughs> I mean, I was like, wow. Uh, it was one of those books, because uh, I like sometimes to read mystery, but just to have mm. something different to read. Mm. And the way you wrote it and how you have it, the, the woven, the, what's woven in there is still the word and how people get to know God. But it was just, it kept you on in in terms of how you brought everything to fruition and brought the young lady back to God. So how did you get into writing? Um, actually, I never thought I would be writing, um, but in 97, November 15th, I was at a prayer breakfast at, um, not a prayer breakfast, at a, a harvest breakfast at my a former church, one of my former churches. And um, the minister that evening, he called me up to pray. You know, they had no prayer, mm -hmm. prayer line and no um, prayer breakfast. But during the prayer and during his impartation to me, he said, I'm going to release the gift of the ready writer upon you. And at that time, I only wrote in my journal prophetically from dreams and stuff like that. And then he said, God is releasing the gift of the ready writer on you. You're going to write books, plays, novels. And I'm like, I don't even like to read like that. So, you know, I'm going to write a book. And in 2001, my pastor said, God wants us to stir up the gift. And I remember the prophetic word. Mm -hmm. And I sat down to start writing. And I never stopped. 2001, almost 22 years ago, March 11th. Wow. Mm-hmm. So a prophetic word that came to pass. Came to pass. Still coming yeah, to pass. Right. That's right. I write him every year on his birthday and thank him for that word that he released. He's like, what you talking about? But and you didn't even know that was inside of you. And I think that no. is a message for people because sometimes people speak, prophets will speak into our life about things they see prophetically, about what God is going to do with you. And then you're like, really? God. I, I was cracking up because I was crying during the, I was speaking in tongues and crying during the prayer. And then when I got in the car with Rodney, I was like, Rodney, did you hear what he said? And I would talk to my prayer group. I was like, we was crying. I was like, writing a book. I don't know about that because sometimes people hit and miss. <laughs> Baby. Hey, 25 books later, a plethora of plays later. Ah, who oh, sorry. Yes. Amen. So Amen. I, but I no, but that, God but, is yeah. faithful. The gifts he's placed inside. Yes. He wants us to use those gifts. Yes. And sometimes we don't, we can't see sometimes the gifts he's placed because we, we want to say, what well, I, I can't do that or that's some, for somebody else. But no, someone said, no, I see this in you. This is what God is going to do with you. Yes. And it is, it has come to fruition. 
Yes, and people always say, God is not going to bring you a word that you didn't already know that's not confirming. That was not confirming to me in my carnal mind. Mm -hmm. My spirit picked that thing up, mm -hmm. but I was like, this dude, off. <laughs> Ain't off. No, he was in the spiritual realm. You just weren't there. Yeah, I was off. <laughs> and your spirit just had to catch up with it because yep. you got it already giving you the gift. Everything we need is inside of us anyway. Mm -hmm. Everything that we need to do is already inside of us, but sometimes we downplay it or say it's not good enough. And God is saying, I, I have need for you. Yes. So you're there, so you're basically in her, uh, you all work close together with some of the plays. And I think you want to talk about one of your plays that you're working on now. I mean, you've done so many and you've written so many books, which we maybe can get to some of that as well. And you do a lot of other things as well. Yes. But, um, but this particular play, um, I had written um, right before I gave up drama um, at my former church. And um, I talked to the pastor about it when I said, well, I'm, I still want to keep it, though. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, fine. So the church never did it. Um, and I see why now, not because of the church, but because of the message that I have as a marketplace minister now um, to take to the world. So we're talking about sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. And you would think, well, that ain't got nothing to do with God or Jesus. And actually it doesn't. But when you save a life, mm -hmm. it's still saving a life. Amen. And there's so many people who have children, young adults, who are not aware of the seriousness because it hasn't knocked on their door. But when I say it's serious, when little kids, mostly the age of 12 years old, um, are being bought, mm -hmm. sold like a slave, mm -hmm. raped. Like imagine a 12 year old, your child, everybody who has children, think about it. Your child that you see every day that come home, one day they just don't come home. And you're like, where's Shantae at? Mm -hmm. Where my boy at? She ain't came home. Right. And sometimes, because we have children sometimes who want, who get mad with their parents' rules. Yes. Because, you know, you're so strict. I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. I want to run away. No, I tell people, no, you don't, you, you run away and you run into something that's bigger. Run than right into it. Her. Run right into it. And sometimes they're killed. Yeah. And so my goal is to um, raise awareness. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know, you don't know. Amen. But baby, when you know, you can look out for the signs. You can look out for your children. Y'all can be mindful of internet activity. Right. So we got a good storyline going. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we really need to bring that message of hope that you can escape this. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's nothing we can do for those that are out there. But for those who are not, just like with the bullying, mm -hmm. for those who are not, it's, um, it's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call. Yeah. In Atlanta, where we live, um, it's like, I, I want to say the headquarters, mm -hmm. for their numbers are astronomical. We're talking, they're making more money than the biggest drug dealers. You're talking $200 million, billion dollars. Mm. We need much prayer because it is an, it's a pandemic, and it's that's a pandemic itself. It is itself. epidemic. And we have pandemic. to really get back to giving our children the word of God to help them realize what, when parents do stuff, when they correct you, when they're saying mm -hmm. you, know, you can't do certain things because you know you don't want to do that. And I think sometimes when they are educated to know this is what can happen if you're out of place, or if you're alone or by yourself, or you're isolated, people sometimes will befriend you to get to know you, mm -hmm. and basically in that friendship, all of a sudden you begin to trust them because that's yep. the thing you build the trust, and then yep. all of a sudden in building the trust. You think, well, this is a friend of mine, and then they'll, they'll play the game, and all of a sudden you're like, it's to your point, you don't come home. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so um, my husband had approached me mm -hmm. when I had, he was talking about me giving up, and um, he approached Tabor and some other people to um, come in. He threatened me. <laughs> to come in, because he was like, if we get the financial part of it, mm -hmm. Can, will you just produce the show, mm -hmm. write it, get your team together like you always do, did for the church? We can do this on our own. And he, he his brother, some other um, people who are not here, um, say that's how he became my executive producer because he was like, I'm all in and I'm in until she blow up. And people don't just say that. And I want to say thank you. You're welcome. Is it to the point, I, I, want, I don't want people to miss the fact that you wanted to give up. I, I was you, like, you forget was, it. You were like, you wanted to give up and because mm -hmm. you knew that what she had was good, and God, God wanted that message to get out there. He, want, he wanted her, her gift of writing in terms of bringing hope, bringing awareness, and for people to get back to praying against these things that are demonic, to get back to praying. It's because God, God wants us to win. He wants you to live a healthy, good life. He wants mm -hmm. us to walk in prosperity and victory. Yes. This is not what he wants. And many of this happens because of disobedience and things that people do that are outside the word of yep. God. And so you were ready to give up. But I think sometimes when people are at the cusp of their breakthrough, 
at yep. the core where you're at the pinnacle point where it's about to happen, you say, this is not happening fast enough, I'm tired, I want to throw in the towel. So how, what did you say to her when she was ready to give up? Um, well, that was every morning. She, <laughs> we, she was, you know, she catch me early in the morning like, listen, I've been doing this 20 years and this and that. I said, well, we got to just keep going, you know, and sometimes, you know, you have to lean on your closest people. Mm -hmm. So when her husband asked me, I was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll invest in that. But um, the thing was, we did it at uh, Pastor Bronner Event Center. Yes, Epi Center. So, so we, we, it was her and I riding, seeing different mm -hmm. uh, venues, mm -hmm. and we got to that one. And it was like, this is annoying. This, this is it. We didn't know the budget, we didn't know, <laughs> And I, they charge for everything, like literally <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. But you learn. Yeah. It was a learning process, and everything yes. you go through is to help you learn oh, yeah. by how to do it. And you become you become smart. You become skilled at knowing how to do things. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so with that, I mean, I didn't take it as serious mm -hmm. because she's. We've done a hundred plays, right. and all of them good. But it was the aftermath. Like people were crying, and people were. Like, it, it was just like, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, just amazed to be a part of this. Like, it, it really touched the a lot of people. of people. And a lot of people didn't know that this was happening in Atlanta. Like $290 million a year is what wow. they make off sex trafficking. Wow. Like, that's a lot of money. That's, that's a lot of money. So I told her, like, even, you, and you'll see at the play, it's like, okay, if you have $290 million, revenue. It's no way not to hit some of the higher up. Somebody knows what's going on. What's going on, like right. $290 million. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think this is a great message. It's a raising awareness. I think in educating, I think many times parents who sometimes are oblivious, yes. you know, people who are oblivious and says, because some people say, that can't happen to me. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm always alert. I'm watching what I do. And sometimes, you know, you people let their guard down. I remember there was a movie out years ago that was, uh, it was about this young lady. She came out of the store. It's a true story. And she came out of like a Walmart or something. And she was walking to her car, but she was a teenager. She had her cell phone to her ear, talking to someone. And in the process of walking to her car, she got abducted. Right. Now, outside the store, they, this is the, it was called taking in broad daylight. People were watching, people were watching this take place. They were sitting outside the store. No one came to her rescue. Right. No one. Right. And he hit her, popped her, she got back, she ran out, he hit her again, then he knocked her out and she was gone. Mm. And so he drove off. And people, no one, no one got involved, no one did anything. Wow. And it's really happening. Every it's really happening. day, like right now, one in four girls. Adolescents, 12 year old, are adopted. One in six boys. It ain't just girls. Mm -hmm. Young women. And is it because they just are they are they loners? Are they? Is it like a profile for? Um, Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, they're watching. Mm -hmm. They're looking out for the person who's not paying attention, who's on their phone. Exactly. And like you said about kids on the internet making friends with people, and they're not really 14, and they're 30 something right. pedophiles. Mm -hmm looking for and young people sometimes are on the internet they're giving out a lot of information yeah and my mama saying? ain't here my mama ain't here she at work or, or i come down the street every day when i come home from school you know you're giving information sometimes people are compiling that information right. and you know you don't know you just say well you know i come down xyz street every day and you know i really usually by myself and i like to play basketball whatever you're giving information many times people are compiling that data right, that you're not thinking about and then all of a sudden they befriend you and you're like, this is something, because people, young people sometimes don't think. Right. And there's different snares that people use. So yes. we, it's a prayer, it's really a strong, we need to be in prayer. Oh, yeah. yes, in a sense, we pray absolutely. praying, say, Lord, this is, a, this is a demonic spirit that needs to, that stronghold needs to be released. Absolutely, absolutely. And it could be stopped, but you have people in high places right. doing some things. But God. Come on. But, but God, but God Come says, you know, we, you know we're, the prayers of the righteous, the prayers of the righteous avail of much. They do, yeah. And so we have to keep praying, but you're bringing awareness, and I think that's a critical piece is that when you become more aware, when you know more, you can do things differently. Absolutely. Right? You know what to watch for, what signs to see, because now even when you travel, I'm seeing signs now that are in, rest, in restrooms that used to not be there in terms of things. If you see certain things, be mindful be of this so that you can mm -hmm. alert someone. So that was not there, you know. Five, five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So tell people how they can reach you, how they can know more. What's the name of the play? First, you didn't give us the name of the play. <laughs> tell us the name of the play. The name of the play is Danger Zone. 
um, and they can find out any information about it on our website, thereadywriter.com. And spell so, that for an inch of ready. It's the Ready Writer, T H E R E A D Y W R I T E R dot com. So we will make sure they find it. So everything you need to know there about how to, to get more information, everything is when it's going to take place, is there for you because you really want to come see this because the awareness and just bringing light to a subject yes. is real. I think everybody, it's a, it can hit political, mm -hmm. it can hit the church, it can hit the people who are not in the church, it can hit everybody and it has hit our country mm -hmm. and it's big yep. and it ain't funny no more it ain't no joke no Amen. more Amen. so take the next minute and a half and just someone who's watching tonight just encourage them with your journey in terms of where you are god has brought you and god is using your gifts to to bless the world and to enlighten people so talk to talk to someone tonight who's watching look at that camera just talk to someone and encourage them hey y'all <laughs> Just my biggest thing that I tell people who are dreamers, um, don't let dream killers stop your dream. There is nothing you can't do. People always say, the sky is the limit. There is no limit to what you can do. The sky is not the limit. You have to start, do something, and be consistent with it. You can do everything. Anything God has called you to do. And people, some people don't know their purpose. Everybody has a purpose. You have a purpose, and there's nothing. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. There's nothing you can't do. You can do anything. If you can believe it, you definitely can achieve it. Go for it. Do it. You're going to save or change your life when you're in your lane doing your call. And you, you said a key thing when you're in your lane. Baby. That means stay in your lane. What don't, you don't look so sideways. Don't look to the left. Come on. Still be laser focused as you can make sure that you run the race set before you because our problem is sometimes we begin to look sideways, mm -hmm. look at other people and begin to compare ourselves when we have that imposter syndrome Absolutely. and we lose track of what God is calling us. So you said a key thing, to stay in your lane. The gifts God gives you, he gives you the vision, he gives you the provision to get it done. And it's going right. to be awesome. You just have to trust, you have to trust mm -hmm. that if he's given it to you, to walk in it and to stay focused with what he has called you to do. Absolutely. Not somebody else, what he's called you to do. And I think that's the word for someone who's watching tonight. Stay tuned to what God has called you to do because when you begin to look other places, you're comparing your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 15. Come on. It is not that's the right. same. Right. Yes. It's right. not. Right. So sometimes you want to be where they are, but you, you, can you handle what they've gone through? Come so on, So we man. bless God for you being here tonight. Uh, give them the, the, the website again for the play quickly. Okay, the, the readywriter.com. Danger Zone is the play. Amen. As soon as you get on the site, you'll see everything and my books. All Amen. of that is there. So we bless God for you being here this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. God, may God bless us. May this balloon, may this be something that will take you to heights than what you could ever imagine. So we bless God for you. Receive we that. praise God for what you're doing and how God's continue to use your gift. And now we're going to go back to our music guest, Psalmist Rain, you are great.
Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you thanks, God. Thank you for your goodness. Your steadfast love. Mercy's new every day. For your grace. Your good, good God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. We lift our hands in worship. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love, Lord. Oh, we thank you for your love. Your steps of love. Thank you so much for joining us tonight at WATC here in the prayer room. We're excited because salvation has come to Atlanta, Georgia. Salvation has come to the southeast region and to this globe. I'm here to minister Christ to you. You know, the word says that if we would confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, that we shall be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Repeat these words after me. Father God. I know that I am a sinner, I was born in sin, and I ask that you would forgive me. I believe Jesus died for me, and that he raised God, you raised him from the dead. I want to turn from my sins. Jesus, come into my heart, and be my personal Lord and Savior. I live for you now, forevermore, all the days of my life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for all that you have done. The impartation, the beauty of the Holy Spirit is now upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. He has anointed and qualified you to preach the good news to the poor. Now go, be saved, and set the next person free in the name of Jesus. Now, back to the studio. And we're back with my guest for the second part is Sheena Robinson. Welcome to the set. Thank you, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yes, because you're doing, a, I mean, I've been noticing you're doing a lot of stuff out there. I was like, look at you. Yes, this is definitely the season. God has told me it's time to take action, so I'm excited about everything that's going on. And I see you're taking action, too. Yes. So tell people a little bit about your background, who you are. So I am a financial professional. I got into the financial industry literally in 2008. Um, just kind of stumbled into it. It wasn't something that I thought you know, I wanted to do. I originally wanted to be in broadcasting, but I kind of switched my mindset. <laughs> And um, someone, it just kind of landed in my lap. And um, I've been a part of the industry since 2008, and I've just kind of transformed some of my mindset about the things that are not like the traditional industry and mm -hmm. changing it up and doing some things that I like to do to make it fun and learn about money. Okay, so you see, you, it just kind of stumbled in your lap. So talk to me about how did it just stumble into your lap? You went from broadcasting to financial planning and financial acumen. So how did that happen? So I was working. I got here after college, and so I was working. And one of my coworkers actually introduced me. Um, they invited me to come out to listen to some information. And it was in the financial industry. Everything I was learning, I was like, oh, my God, I wish I would have learned this when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And from there, I just got so consumed with that information and wanted to make sure people around me got the same information. So I made a personal decision that I wanted to be a part of the industry and be the change that I wanted to see, especially in my community and share the information with others. So now you're doing workshops, I know, around. You have, you started like, you have an academy. So tell me about some of the, the many things, because you're doing a lot of things around having to educate children to adults. So talk to people about some of the things you're doing to help raise the awareness. 
So I have a for-profit called Diva for Wealth, LLC. And so what we do, we're a lifestyle boutique. We help specifically women, but we do help everybody as mm -hmm. well. But with personal, professional, and financial success, so whether it's life coaching or helping them get their business started or just helping them put together a financial plan, we do that as far as services, but we also do things for women in the community, as you just expressed, workshops mm -hmm. where we talk about different subjects, let our hair down, and just have a good time. And I'm excited about that because we have some exciting news coming up with Diva for Wealth. You know, with COVID, everything kind of got shut down, but um, we're relaunching, and so we're going to be having these royalty tea parties, and so I'm excited about it. Royalty tea yes, parties? we are royalty. <laughs> yes, we are. I'm excited about it. Um, God gave me that vision. Um, just a few months ago, he just said that it's time to get back out. It's time to let women know that they are royalty and share the good news. And so I'm excited about it. Um, as you expressed with Financial Parent Academy, um, that kind of just fell in my lap with God. It started with my book, Financial Parenthood, The Keys to Raising a Rich Kid. And then God was like, you need more than just a book. You need to help parents be more accountable. And so he gave me the vision after literally two months after the book launch to get the nonprofit started. So. You know, it all just came to me. It wasn't something that I wanted to do, but I know it's God because everything has come together and I'm just giving God my life and this is my ministry and I'm here to serve. And I think it's to the point, I think it's so important because fun, understanding finances and how to better use your finances in terms of because just because you have the money does not need, mean you need to spend it. Absolutely. And sometimes people get money and they go buy things that they don't need to buy because it's not what, they didn't ask God, should I do this? And in just buying something, then all of a sudden you don't have money for the things you really need. And so as you are out here, as you are working with women, as you're working with other people, what are some things, some of the consistent things you're seeing that people struggle with around money? So not making enough, number one. <laughs> and so I always tell people, even if you're working a job, have a plan B, right? Learn a skill set. Online um, businesses are big right now. Um, even if you're just going out to different events and um, learning how to become a vendor, making your own products, um, but find ways to make additional income, even if it's a part-time job. So I hear a lot of not having enough money. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, you know, I spend so much, so that's part of not having enough money either. So really setting a budget for yourself to see where your money is going and to make plans for your money. Mm -hmm. I think we don't make plans. And so when we go to the store, it's so easy to impulse shop or I'm supposed to be shopping for this one dress, but they all look good. So I'm gonna grab everything that I want. And then we find ourselves not being able to pay the light bill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the light bill should have been paid first. Absolutely, and that goes back with priorities too. Yes. Um, a lot of us, we don't really prioritize. You know, we like to look good, but we really don't have it all together. Yeah, and that's the sad part because I tell people sometimes if you go to the grocery store when you're hungry, that's not a good time to go. Because sometimes you wind up putting stuff in the cart that you really don't need, that you didn't come there to, to buy. Right, and that's part of the impulse shopping. If you have a, no one really, I guess some of the old school ways of living, we need to go back to. Like having a shopping list and sticking with that. Um, you know, I like the debit card, but the debit card can get you in trouble. Maybe you need to go take the cash out and then that's all you have to spend. Because once you have that card, it's like that piece of plastic, you'll just start going crazy spending money. But then you can use it so much where there's nothing on it. That. <laughs> you can keep using it and all of a sudden you go someplace and they're like, oh, this is not going through. Absolutely. And then, you know, that goes back to not having enough money. So we're back at the same problem once we spend all the money. So, but so I think if you help, as you're helping women who basically many times in the household can help the whole household in terms of becoming better stewards, because what it is, we want to be better stewards of what God has given us. Absolutely. And so many women, you know, Unfortunately, in the African American community, a lot of households are not led by men, which right. you know I would love to see it turn around. But unfortunately, you know it is what it is. But um, a lot of African American women, we are you know that role model that children are seeing. So it's very important as mothers to get your finances in order because your children are watching. You know those little things that you think that they're not watching, they are. I remember growing up, a lot of my habits I learned from my mother. Mm -hmm subconsciously, right? She didn't intentionally teach me, but that's what I thought when I got out, that my mom did this, so I'm supposed to do this too. And so, you know, that's one of the things with the academy, one of the reasons I started it, because I wanted parents to learn how to become more intentional about the things that their children are seeing from them, especially when it comes to their finances. And then you said the keys to raising a rich kid. I love that in terms of you giving parents keys for how to raise rich children. 
Absolutely, and it's not, and I like to tell people this, like, rich, I'm talking about having control of your time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, you know, when we talk about the Bible, we talk about money being the root of all evil, but it's how you, your love for money and how you control money. And so my, the whole movement with Financial Parent Academy is to help children have better control of their time. If they start early, you know, they have better choices they can make mm -hmm. with their money. If they want to buy a home or buy a car at a certain age, they actually have enough money to do so and mm -hmm. they not live in like so many adults find themselves living from check to check right. because the lack of planning. And so I think it's very important that, you know, we really be intentional again about teaching our children, but at the same time, putting them in position to win, opening up accounts and sharing information with financial literacy with the children so that they can have a better, you know, lifestyle than many of adults didn't experience. And teaching them the importance of saving and teaching them the importance of tithing when they get money and giving back, you know, you, know, you give your tithes, you don't pay, you give your tithes, giving back yes. to God what he's blessed you with, teaching them how to give at an early age, because I find and sometimes a lot of young children are sometimes selfish. You know, I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, so I know about being selfish <laughs> when I watch them, but, you know, I, they have started to share. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the two-year-old, the he loves his sister, and so he ends up giving her what she wants. So she got him in control. So I know that sharing starts at a young age, and like you said, if we encourage it, um, they're definitely watching it, and it's something that we do need to encourage, because I do believe you reap what you sow, and when you give with a given heart, and you know, it's not selfishly, it does come back to you. Yes, absolutely. So you also done some things around uh, teaching little little children how to learn how to save money, how to count money. So talk to us about the book you did around that that's really helping babies. I mean, we're talking about the little people. I mean, like we're talking about like the five and under. <laughs> so Light to Wealth is the book. And I love that book because it's in different nationalities. But mm -hmm. the whole mindset around that book is just helping children, first off, get excited about reading and get excited about saving money and teaching them foundational principles of how to get started with money. Mm -hmm. So like you said, you know, teaching them corn recognition, the importance of putting money away to pay yourself first and things like that. And a need versus a want, you know, you think it's so simple, but it's all about building that mindset early because I talk to a lot of parents who have teenagers and at that point they're like, how can I keep them in my pocket? And it's a mindset, you know, if mom always did this, then it's gonna be kind of hard to break away from mom when she did everything for me. But if I taught my children how to be independent, whether it be entrepreneurship or just, you know, a way of earning their own money, mm -hmm. they're probably gonna be well off and not in your pockets. Because I know growing up, we got an allowance for doing our chores. And if we didn't do our chores, you didn't get your allowance. Well, you know, there's some controversy around that. <laughs> Should you get paid? And I, I'm not against it. Um, it. It's really a personal choice. Right. Um, but I really am on to the entrepreneurship um, movement with mm -hmm. these children, especially they have so many gifts and talents. Yes. My daughter, she's surprised me. She's with this TikTok, she knows how to do video production and just taught herself these things. And so children, I think sometimes we underestimate them, but they are so amazing. Yes. That once we see that they have these talents, it's up to us as parents to help cultivate those talents. So you can help pull her in to help you with some stuff to do for your business. TikTok? Yes, she is the TikTok queen. And you know, I remember being young and my mom, I felt like she was old school, but I kind of feel <laughs> old school because my daughter, she, she knows the TikTok and I really haven't tapped into TikTok, but I know where to go when I'm ready. I mean, that's the thing. Sometimes I tell people, you don't have to have all the answers. You just need to know where to go to get the answers. But you're providing tools and resources to help people, women, families learn how to become better stewards of their money and how to raise children who will not be, they'll, they'll be able to handle money management and not let money rule them. Because we know the Bible says you either serve mammon or you serve God. We want to serve God. Yes. yes. And I, I just, I'm all about being um, prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of us, we got pushed out into adulthood and we were not prepared and we had to learn through experience. And so, even though I'm so focused on children and making sure that they get the proper preparation, I also want to help reset adults' mindset Ooh. as well. And so that's why we have these, having these royalty parties. I used to have parties back in the day for women and we used to have these fun things. And you know, the thing about it is that I just love, like for me, what I'm doing, when 
people just get it and mm -hmm. they just want to change their mindset. You know, I've had women, because they've attended a workshop, they're buying their new home, they're paying their car off, they're learning the rule of 72 and how interest they shouldn't be, you know, spending all this money on these credit cards and just paying the minimum amount, paying it back, and then you're paying all this money um, that you didn't have to. And mm -hmm. so just being able to educate women and children and just seeing them turn their lives around is just so much fulfillment for me and just definitely, um, I just love being a part of this ministry of just serving people and giving them the information so that they can live their best life. Yeah, because you get to light when the light bulbs go off. Because I remember when I was in college, you know, you, you learn some of the stuff through the school of hard knocks. And so when you go to college many times and you, you know, you're out there and you're making good grades and doing things, they will offer you these credit cards. And so I remember when I was in college, they were saying, you can get a credit card here, we're going to give you this. And I was like, oh, really? They give you all these credit cards, not realizing that when you charge these things on your credit card, you have to pay them back. Yes, and many people, when they get out of college, they have bad credit um, because they thought it was a time free money. And then when the collectors are calling, then they real life takes place. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I did, I did pay them off, but I'm like, this is serious. When you charge stuff, you know, you know that when you charge it, you, it's not free. Yeah. But somehow, or another, you don't like. I gotta pay this back like every month, and or pay it off at one time. So I learned very quickly. It's like, no, this is not the way you want to go. Well, it's not all bad with a credit card. You just need to know the, how to properly use the card. You know, I to splurge on it, definitely not the right way. Um, not even for, a lot of people use it for emergency funds. Yes. But we do need to start having our own accounts for it too. Um, it, it's just really learning how to, the proper use of a credit card. I'm not gonna say it's all bad. So it's just the discipline. Correct. It's, it's really having the discipline. It's okay, do I, is this a need or is this a want? Exactly. And so you talked about something in terms of, so how much, because you know people talk about having six months worth of savings, like in your emergency fund. What do you recommend for families in terms of in their emergency fund? So back in the day before everything started happening, six to 12 months, but mm -hmm. I recommend up to two years. Now with things like COVID, um, it's definitely important, um, especially if you, if they're an entrepreneur, it, it depends on their, their mm -hmm. jobs too, because if you're an entrepreneur, you definitely want to have up to two years because you don't know if something like a COVID will happen again and your business might slow down. Um, but I think a lot of people caught on to the virtual world. And yes. so a lot of people, a lot of money was still made during COVID. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it goes back to what your occupation is. Maybe if you have an ongoing job, maybe you can have that six to 12 months, but I definitely depends on it. I believe it depends on your occupation. So tell people how they can reach you for getting more information regarding the Financial Parent Academy, uh, your Diva for Wealth. Tell people how they can connect with you. So for Diva for Wealth, you can go to www.divaforwealth.org. And for Financial Parent Academy, it's financialparentacademyinc.com. And these, the royalty tees, so you've already started those, are those going to be done like monthly, quarterly? How often are you going to be doing those? So those are going to be done quarterly. Okay. And if you, you're interested, please reach out because we're going to be launching the first official one in April, which is Financial Literacy Month. Right. So I'm super excited about it and I uh, already got a lot of women interested. So we're definitely going to do some big things this year. So take the next minute and a half, Sheena, look into that camera and just encourage someone who maybe was struggling with their finances and just encourage them to, that they can move forward. God has them. Just take that time and just minister to them. I just want to encourage you, write the vision and make it plain. That's what God gave me tonight to share with you. A lot of times we have things in our head that we want to do, but we need to write it down. And then we need to take action. And then we need to speak over ourselves. And we need to speak over ourselves with positive affirmations. No matter if your financial situation is not ideal, know that it's just a part of the test. But whatever it is that God has promised you, just know that it's going to come, come to pass. And so just keep pushing every day. You may feel like you're behind because you're watching people on social media, but know that you're right where God has you. And every day, just take a little step forward to get closer to your vision. Yeah, write the vision, make it plain. And I think sometimes people have those things. Uh, thank you for those encouraging words, but people have it in their mind what they want to do. But if it's not written down, sometimes it doesn't happen. Yes, then you can be all over the place and unorganized, and then you feel like it's not going to come to pass. But I think it helps you to just stay focused. Yeah. Because sometimes people say, someday I'm going to do this, you know. And I tell people, someday is that elusive day that never takes place. Because you tell about someday, when is that? Is that next week, next month? And sometimes it's just starting small. Even if you can just save whatever it is, if you just get started. I think the key thing for many people is just getting started saving. Everything you make, you don't have to spend. And, and that's true. 
and that's true. Just to start with baby steps. Not telling you if, if you're not, if even if you don't have a lot of money, you know, you may not be ready to invest in stocks or you know different investment vehicles. Just maybe opening up an emergency fund that might be a big deal for you because you can go to the bank. You shouldn't have your your regular money and your emergency fund in the same account. Mm -hmm. We need to have that separated. So just taking baby steps. I think once you just take baby steps day by day about you know have your list check out check off a few at a time mm -hmm. not trying to eat the whole meal right um, I think it'll continue to build your financial confidence and then as you continue to do that then I think that you'll move all the way up to starting to invest and building a legacy for your family it, and the key thing is simply get started just take those baby steps, whatever it is for you, because it's going to be different for everybody. Yes. But the key thing is if you sometimes say, I'm going to do it at some point, writing it down helps you get it done. If you just talk about it, sometimes it doesn't happen. And sometimes we don't, people talk about setting goals, but if you don't write them down for the most part, many people do not accomplish anything because it's not before them. It doesn't stay before them. So when you write it down, it says write the vision, make it plain. Yes. So that you can go back and say, okay, did I do this? And you're accountable to yourself, but sometimes sharing with other people also makes you accountable. And that's exactly what I was going to say, having a family plan. Yes. Yes. Amen. So Sheena Robinson, thank you so much for joining us, giving us some tips on financial literacy and just sharing your insight and your knowledge. We praise God. May God continue to expand your territory as you go to do these royalty teas, financial parenthood, the books for the children, light to wealth, all the things you're doing. You're doing a lot. So may God continue to just cause you to, to, to just soar higher. And we're going to go back to the music guest, Psalmist Rain, to the King. I know you're grateful all over the room. I know you're grateful all in your homes. But today we're going to continue to sing and shout out praise to the King Most High, who is worthy of the praise. Hallelujah, we declare. So we will cry it out, shout it out. I love to you, King, and bear
We're back on the set. I know you were blessed this evening. We had great guests. We had Annetta Swift. We had Tabor Hart. We had Sheena Robinson sharing their stories about what God is doing in their lives. God wants to do the same thing in your lives. He's giving you everything you need in your hand. You just got to write the vision, make it plain. You know that God wants the very best for you. He wants you to walk in victory. He wants you to walk in faith. So I just want to encourage you, doesn't matter what you're going through, God is faithful. He's going to be faithful in your life, but you got to trust him with all your heart. Lean out to your own understanding and all the ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Let him direct your path. So this evening we know that you got a word that of encouragement. Again, is Annetta said it was dropped in, on her. That, that thing was just dropped in her spirit. She was prophesied that she was going to do some things and the prophecy came to fulfillment. Sheena, again, she didn't know she was going to be doing financial planning, but God opened the door for her to do that. So God wants to open doors for you. So we thank you for tuning in tonight to the land of life, that your life is being changed because of the stories you hear, the testimonies that you hear about God's glory, God being magnified, God being lifted up. So we bless God for you. We're here every night, Monday through Friday. We're going to close out with our psalmist rain singing, listen. It's important that after you lay your request before the Lord, that you take time to hear his heart. It is there where he'll give you the answer, the strategy. It's there where he'll give you the treasures that you need to continue to make a difference, not only just in this world, but in your life as well. So I want you to hear these words that the Lord spoke to me. One day when I was just going through, he says, before you knew and could understand, Sure.